Alex called it last week. I had technical difficulties this morning. Good morning, good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? Watch, Alex won't even be on today to tease me about it. I'd be okay with that. Good morning. If you're on, let me know when you are. Shoot me a message. Happy spring equinox, everyone. Hey, Amy, how's it going? Oh, camping with Ruffles, you're so close. Good morning, good morning, everyone. My camera did not want to work today, so I had audio and everything, but no video. So it took me a minute, and of course, as soon as I went to go get help, it came on. It was good. So how's everyone doing? How are all your plants doing? Oh, Alex, you are here. Did you hear about my technical difficulties? South Louisiana. Hey, Tina. Deborah from Wisconsin. How's it going? Hey, Tammy. I'm so glad you were able to make it. It's a good one. We're going to you know, talk all things spring. It's finally here, right? The equinox was on the 20th, so we are just two days past. And I don't know about you, but I can feel the shift in the season, so... Planted collards this morning. Very nice. Jane, where are you at? Western New York. Hey, Jenna. Oh, good morning, Velma. Plants are doing well. Waiting a few weeks before I start my tomatoes. But the peppers are doing well. Yeah, Luke, I think, decided he was starting uh, right when he gets back from his trip, his tomatoes. So his are coming. Mine are, you know, working along. We're going to talk about some direct sewing today. I want to know what you guys are already direct sewing, or at least make sure you guys know it's time to get out there and get some seeds in the ground. Finally. Colorado, good morning. Live in Grand Haven. My green beans are seven inches tall. Hoofta! Tammy, when did you start those? <laughs> Um, and what did you do? Are they bush? I really hope they're bush. Otherwise, you're going to have vines everywhere. Victoria starting her tomatoes this weekend. Herbs are doing great. Uh, I just, I did not baby my herbs like I normally do, so I do have to do a little bit of reseeding on some of my herbs, but I got plenty of time. Camping with Ruffles, Rochester, Michigan, or New York. Those are the only two Rochesters I know. Oofta. Is it really a Swedishism? Interesting. I didn't know that. I actually, I say that a lot. Okay, if you want to direct sow your purple coneflower, Greg, if you have not already... Greg, tell me where you are. Where you are? For some reason, I have Illinois in my head, but d forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, if you want to sow your purple coneflower and you have not cold stratified them, stick them in the freezer today and let them stay in there for like until the weekend, and then sow them. You'll have much better luck. <laughs> Oh, Greg, Wisconsin. I, I was close. I was close. So same thing. You have enough cold left probably in Wisconsin, but I would cold strap for like four days in the freezer and then direct sew them outside. Nice. So this, this week I have... Oh, sorry, guys. My chair is bothering me. Okay, so this week I have so far sewn... Um, I did peas, um, I've had lettuce in the ground, I've had kale in the ground, and more of my greens. What about store-bought seed packets? Need to freeze them? Yeah, it's, coneflowers are one that just needs cold stratification. So anywhere you get them, whether it's from us, you found them somewhere else, what have you, toss them. A lot of people do cold strat in the fridge for like three weeks, but I found last year 
uh, and this year as well, that if I do four-ish days in the freezer, I have pretty good germination. So that's what I do now, and it works because I do not plan that far ahead. Oh, okay, planted carrots, lettuce, and onions. Nice. I'm putting more onions in the ground this weekend. I did order some plant starts from Dixondale uh, to go along with the ones I did in the fall, the ones I started in uh, early winter this year, um, just to kind of give me a, a fail safe because I sell my onions and I can't go without an onion crop. So I'm basically trying all three options and having, well, the Dixondale is my fail safe because I know they grow well just in case my crop doesn't work out or if I have to, you know, problem solve a little bit. Sugar snaps. Yep, sugar snaps can go in. Um, I don't have trouble with most peas, so I, but I, I personally put sugar snaps in. Hmm. Yes, Tracy, that could be why. Are they still in seed trays? Um, can you put the whole thing in the freezer? Might work. Uh, Alex is using Luke's so a lot of seeds. Yeah, honestly, I don't do a ton with spacing. I transplant instead. Um... So once everything comes up, if things are too close, I kind of just wiggle out seedlings and plant them in a spot that did not germinate super well. So <clears throat> that works for me and it makes my life a lot easier. So at the farm, in the next you know week, I have, what did I decide, 20 or 30 beds that I gotta get seeds into um, just for like my cool things. I don't have time. I mean, I have an Earthway seeder you know, like a wheel seeder, but it doesn't always do great. And so a lot of the time I'm seeding by hand and I don't always have time to be perfect on spacing. I decide to give myself some grace and just do, um, like shimmy them out and transplant them when they come up. When will trifecta be available? Ho oh, ho, we are hopefully working on that today. Um, we just had to wait for shipment. So it took a while for our ingredients to get to us. Okay, we'll start the onions in my grow bag garden this weekend. Nice. Mills, do you only do a grow bag garden? Or do you do in ground? What else do you do? I want to utilize grow bags a lot more this year. Because um, I may be moving my farm at the end of the fall, and I want to be able to move some of my perennials easier than digging them out, which I can do. But that's an idea. Go, Tammy, wherever you are, go ahead and start your celery now. Celery takes quite a long time to get up and going, and it's once your plants are established and going, very thirsty. It needs water all the time. Uh, so make sure you stay on top of that. What other seeds do you recommend doing cold strat to? Um, purple coneflower, lavender, um, I like to cold strat onions. You don't have to, but it's the same concept of me planting onion seeds in the fall and having them grow out uh, through the winter and they're sprouting already, so they liked the cold stratification. Um, poppies. Sorry, guys, I'm looking at my seed wall. It makes my life a little easier. Yeah. Uh, if you guys have other ones, you can think of. Toss them in here, too. That's all I got on the top of my head. Mm. Beef steaks have not sprouted yet. They were in the fridge, but not sprouting indoors after a week. They are on warming trays. Hmm, huh, Bob. Are they dry? Are they, like, staying? Is your soil retaining enough moisture? Because you got to make sure you don't lose that seed to moisture to soil contact. Um, therefore, what you could consider doing is putting over, either, either if you have a clear dome to put over your tray, or you can just take a sheet of saran wrap. But if you choose to do this, Bob, you have to watch 
closely, okay? Um, it shouldn't take long. If you put some sort of clear over it, uh, they'll sprout typically within like two days, if that. And as soon as they do, you need to take that film back off because you don't want to encourage uh, damping off where um, there's too much moisture right around the stem and um, it doesn't have a way to wick it off. It can rot your stems. That's what I would do. Oh no, moldy soldier. <laughs> destroyed this year's seed starts. No, it only just destroyed the first round. Start again. You have plenty of time, guys. It's only March. We have so much time. Start again. And then figure a way to contain your cat. I lucked out. My cat does not destroy things. She does like... I've been strategic. On one shelf, I leave like a gap in between two trays just enough for her to lay across the shelf under the grow lights because that's what she likes to do. All right, if you guys have questions, go ahead and put them in all caps so that way I can see it. Good morning, Candace. How are you today? What seeds? That's a great question. What should we be starting now for zone five? Um, so zone five, if I had to guess, your last frost date is probably end of May. Okay, Val, can you confirm that for me? So end of May, that puts us out what, uh, March, so to April, to May, so about two months, around eight weeks. So you could be starting close to everything. Um, you could wait another two weeks to start your tomatoes. Definitely get your peppers going, get your brassicas going. Again, because those can go out before your last frost date. Um, all of your hardy greens can go out before your last frost date. You're probably able to direct sow a lot of those hardy greens outside already. Get your carrots going outside. Um, celery is a great one to get up and going. At the eight week mark, you can basically start everything and figure out a way to contain it until it gets in the ground, right? Um, the only thing you just have to consider is space. So if you have enough space where things can get a little big, you're, and as long as you're willing to pot them up, you can get everything going pretty much at eight weeks. It's moist. Then Bob, I think it'll, it'll like the heat of the clear wrap um, for a couple days, and that should get it going. If not, let me know next week. Remember guys, all questions are welcome and all questions are good because if you're asking the question, someone else probably has it too, you're not alone. Very new to gardening. If we had onions we left in the ground over winter, will they be good for the season? <laughs> yup, no, um, I was cleaning up the farm, what, two days ago? I don't even know what day it is now. Mm, Friday maybe I was doing it. And uh, I think I found 20 onions. <laughs> that were not my fall planting onions. They were just last year's onions that were ignored. And uh, they're growing and they're growing great. So they onions are biennials. Those onions may go to seed this year, but what they're really great for is using the greens in cooking. So um, just as the season goes, chop off some of the greens. Always leave like a third of the greens uh, so the plant has enough to thrive. Um, but yeah, don't pull them free free plants and then you can save seed from them in the fall once you stop cutting on them and uh, have seed to start next year there you go yes Chris a absolutely for those of you who got the giant crimson this year who are able to get your hands on it um, yeah save seeds guys that's kind of the whole point of bringing back this little piece of history is that we all have the ability to save seeds and keep it as clean as we can um, to be able to reproduce and get this variety back into everyone's hands. So I'm not quite in the point where I'm gonna be doing, um, talking about like safe seed saving in regards to making sure your strands are clean. Um, I'll be doing that closer to like early summer because that's when we'll be getting into it. I try to keep our topics somewhat close to the season or at least just ahead of it so you're prepared for when it happens. 
Um, but you are going to want to use some sort of blossom bag over the tomato uh, blossoms that you're going to keep from. You do not have to do the whole plant. You just need a tom you could do one tomato and be and be good there. Um, tomatoes do not as easily cross pollinate as a lot of other plants, but there's always still that possibility. So I say be safe and put a blossom bag over it. Hey, Wicked Awesome Gardening, how are you today? I have some new names on here. This is awesome. Uh, my kitty sleeps in my parsley and bee balm. I swear I left out with mine. Any word on when your berries will be for sale? I should have asked our inventory manager when I walked in. Um, when I was here last week, we were thinking two-ish weeks out. So maybe a week, week and a half. But that's not a promise because I haven't asked her yet. <laughs> they make a nice hit. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Kurt, absolutely. And that should be a phone number that I know off the top of my head, but I don't. So just Google at mygardener.com um, and you should be able to find our phone number right on the website and it calls directly into uh, the back of our warehouse right here. You know what, Kimberly, I'm so glad you brought this up. Kimberly said she had to start her onions again because her son knocked them over. I've seen this so much this year is like people on Instagram or Facebook and they show pictures of their seed trays just, you know, kerplop. Remember, you don't have to throw those seedlings away. Most often, there's a ton in there that are completely viable. Sure, don't get me wrong, your labels are now mixed up and your you may not be able to tell the difference between tomatoes, but you can definitely tell the difference between tomatoes and onions, right? Um, go through the soil, find the seedlings that you can work with and plant them back up. People are so concerned with root disturbance on their seedlings, but in reality, they can take a lot more than we even dish out to them. So plant them back up, give them a drink of water, and then let them be for a few days, and you will be surprised at how quickly they bounce back. Crystal, good question. So she asked, what should she buy to sift her seed starting mix? Um, okay, so I was just given this contraption and it's a five gallon bucket and what they did was they cut, I wish I had something that resembled a five gallon bucket next to me. They cut like a rectangle around the bucket um, and then put a fine, maybe a quarter inch mesh in there and um, they just put it on a PVC handle. Okay, so it, it's like, oh, it's up on two pieces of PVC and then you can turn it. So as you turn it, um, it's able to sift it out for you. You put it right over a wheelbarrow or your, um, your tote that a lot of us put our mix into while we're starting seeds and it'll sift it right out for you. And if I were to build that with the PVC, the five gallon bucket, I mean, it probably cost me 15 bucks. And I know a lot of people have stuff like that laying around too, so just get crafty. You can do it as easy as if you don't have a ton to do, you can do that mesh, the quarter inch ish mesh or hardware cloth or whatever you're going to use. And you can put it around just a square, a wooden, make a four sided, you know, square out of four pieces of wood, wrap it around like a screen and just shake like that, like pan, uh, like panning and water, same kind of concept. Tanya, I'm so sorry, but I believe we ran our last giant crimson sale this past week. Past week, week before, we had done four or five sales of it and we're able to get seeds out to so many people. But if you didn't get your hands on it, don't worry. We will have so much next year and um, you'll have the opportunity then. Yeah, see, Candace said her son did the same thing, knocked over her tomato starts and had 40 tomatoes that were unlabeled. But I bet you it was fun trying to guess what they were as they came up, right? All right, let's see. Put them in all caps, guys, so I can see them. 
blew off my picnic table last year. Okay, if it happens on a hot, dry day and the sun burns them, you gotta restart them. But if they're salvageable, try to salvage them. Hey, from South Australia, it is, I love when you guys put the time in this. It is 12.35 or 12.25 a.m. on Wednesday morning. <laughs> I just think that's cool. Trifecta will be back in stock this week sometime. That's not a promise, but I'm pretty sure that's when it's happening. Uh, we just had to wait on a shipment for our ingredients, so sorry about that, guys. We're doing our best. Growing potatoes in containers works really well. I do suggest having a large enough container because the space needed to grow the tubers is directly correlated to how big your tubers are going to get. So I want to make sure that you guys are starting with enough room in your container. Now the best practice is to only fill your container about a quarter of the way uh, to plant your first uh, potato, potato in. And as the foliage grows, you are going to add soil on top until you have just the top part of your plant showing. That's enough for the plant to keep going keep growing and as it grows you're going to keep adding soil until you reach the top of your container. Danielle, what are the chances that flower seeds from 2000 will still germinate? Well, you'll never know until you try them, right? And if you throw them away, you really will never know. Take the giant crimson for instance. I mean that's a 90 year old variety and a 90 year old seed that we germinated and we're able to save seeds from and now everyone's got their hands on it, so. Your coffee seeds. Candace, you're doing them inside, right? Cause you're in zone 6B. Make sure they're inside. Check out Luke's videos. He has a few on growing coffee plants. Um, and because I haven't done it yet myself, so I don't want to give you false, false advice on that. He's been doing it. Hmm. How can I help another beginner gardener when they're ignoring all videos from YouTube? I recommend them. They've already had countless plant deaths from not hardening off correctly. Um... You know, that's kind of a hard one. For us who are out here trying to teach as many people as we can to grow food and what we can do with it and how to be successful, it's hard when you have someone who's not willing to hear you. You know, things can go in their ear and out the other. What is the saying? They say you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. It's the same concept. So honestly, the best way if you're running into that problem is just lead by example. Um, you can post about what you're doing and they'll see it. That's another option. Um, but if they want to learn the hard way on having many plants die, then they will learn the hard way, right? So that's okay. Do I need to cold stratify seeds again? if it's been a month or more since I did it the first time. Tanya, just to be safe, toss them in the freezer for a couple days and then get them going. The three days isn't gonna make a huge difference on your, your you know, how quickly your plant's gonna grow. If anything, it'll just be a fail safe for you. I would love to hear how everyone's winter sowing is going. We talk about that a little. Dusty says, first time winter sowing in Wisconsin, will the seeds rot if started too early? No, not typically. I haven't had that experience. I have had the experience where the plants kind of like take over my jug and they just look crowded in there um, if I start them too early. But honestly, they kind of just thrive. They kind of thrive. I haven't had rotting. Now, if you run into the fact of them crowding out your jugs, you may want to set up an area where you can give them a little more space by taking off the top of your jugs, but still implementing some sort of season extension to be able to cover the area where all of your jugs are so they can't get bit by the frost. That would be my suggestion. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. James, <laughs> to the guy who asked about what to do if the neighbor isn't taking their advice, you should start more plants. That was great advice. Start extra plants so that way you can sell them to them after all their plants are dead. I mean, you're still helping, right? You're giving them a well-raised plant um, out of good practices, and maybe they'll listen to you next time. James, that's awesome. We're trying to start different kinds of seed libraries in this area, myself and a few other small farms, um, to make seeds accessible for everyone. Luke also has a program where he does um, seeds for needs, and it's the same kind of concept as we collect seeds, uh, either that we aren't using or can't use anymore, and we give them over to those who really need them. My pepper seeds are covered in green algae. What can I do to save them? Tiffany, is it the seed or the soil? I'm thinking it's the soil. I would spray a very diluted... You know what? No, we're gonna we're gonna take a step back, Tiffany. Make sure you have some good air circulation in there first. Try that for a day or two, um, and try not to water them for that time, the day or two. Don't let them dry out completely, but try to see if we can rein in some of that moisture, and then the air in the room is gonna help dry up that algae as well. Um, if you're still having troubles with it next week, ask me again because I'm gonna have a solution for you to spray on it that will kind of nip it in the butt. But I don't like to do it unless we need to because it acidifies the soil. Ooh, you guys, my things grow so fast. I need to amend my beds in, is mushroom compost any good? Heck yes. I love mushroom compost and it's hard for me to find here and I'm always looking for it. So yes, go ahead, mushroom compost is phenomenal. I grew food under LEDs all winter. Works great. Tell me what you grew. Was it mainly greens? What else did you have? <laughs> I'm trying not to overwater, but I hover. <laughs> Do the winter sewing jugs need to be in full sun? That's a really good question, too. No, they don't. Um, you want them to get some sun throughout the day, but they don't necessarily need to be in full sun if you don't have a spot for that to happen. Um, Cara Marco, cold stratified seeds. Can you just take them out of the fridge for next year? I didn't use them at all. Leave them. Just write yourself a note. Like, open up your calendar app. You know, go into January or whatever year you start buying seeds. So hop over to January and put in a message to yourself that says, hey, girl, don't forget that you have lavender seeds in the freezer that you don't need to buy again. Um, there's no harm in leaving them in there. Just don't forget them. Good morning, Land Before Honey. You know, we've had a great, we've had great weather the last like two or three weeks. We have like three, two or three beautiful, beautiful warm days that I'm able to get seeds in. And then we have like three days of rain that waters it all in for me. So like when I sow seeds right now, I'm not going back and watering them at all even if there's a day in between when the rain comes, because as long as I have them and the birds aren't getting to them, the rain will come in and water them and do it just fine for me. Every plant needs hardening off. Uh, remember, hardening off is to introduce your plants to new environments. So it has nothing to do with what kind of plant it is. If you are taking a live, yeah, a live plant from one environment to another one, you have to introduce it over time. That's a good reminder for your indoor plants too. Hardening off your indoor plants for those who like to bring them outside in the summer still needs to happen because you will cry big tears if your monstera dries out. So be careful there. Yes to the mushrooms because the soil you're using has uh, could very well have spores in it. Sure, they could definitely get aphids too. Um, I would just take the, the tops off of them 
and uh, give them a chance to dry out just a little bit. You can always spray for aphids as well. Yes, I'm glad you're having fun starting tomatoes. All right, let's see, first timer here. Okay, I saw for the beginning of that and then it ran away from me, guys. Oh no. Why won't my open pollinated summer squash pumpkin set fruit? Uh, it could be too much nitrogen. That could be uh, potentially the problem. When plants have too much nitrogen, they produce a lot more foliage, including their vines and everything, uh, before they want to set fruit out. That could be part of it. Um, if your plant is big enough and you're ready for pumpkins, stop the vine. Stop it at one end and it can focus on producing um, blooms on the other end. Christine Davis, you say you wish you had a program in your area to help you know when to sow, what works best. Um, there, there's so many things out there. Um, there's different companies that talk about it for different zones. Um, Homesteaders of America, they like to post, say, zone five, plant this now. Zone six, you should be direct sowing this and starting this inside. Fruition Seeds does it too. Johnny's does it. Luke likes to put that info out. I mean, the info's out there. You just got to find a source that fits your growing zone and uh, run with it. So, Christine, let me know what growing zone you have, and I can try to point you in the right direction. You might be a little late, Jenna, for starting foxgloves. I just started a couple this uh, yesterday, actually, just to see if I can get them up and going. I understand that I might not get much out of them this year, but I am starting them to see if I can at least get the plant established. Yeah, don't buy mushroom compost from Home Depot. It might not even be mushroom compost. Try to find a local source. Uh, Tanya, email me over, I have one packet and I think I have two seeds that I didn't sell. Um, so Tanya, go ahead and email me. Are you ready? I'm going to say it out loud. You got to catch it. My email is heirloomacreshomestead at gmail.com. Email me. I will try to see if I, ha I might have one or two left in my one packet that I was able to buy that I might be able to send you a seed. So email me. Okay. Don't you all email me. I don't have enough for everyone. She was just brave enough to comment it. It's fine. All right. I'm going to take another question or two, and then we're probably going to wrap up here shortly. Um, how long is the hardening off process? How do you know? That's, you know, that's what we're going to maybe do. I know we touched on hardening off, was it last week or the week before? Okay, check out at my corner, check out last week and the week before's video. We did go through a hardening off process. I was thinking about it. I don't know if I'm quite ready to do like the full, I was thinking about doing that a week out. Um, check those out first. If you still have questions, come back next week for that and we can go over it a little more. It's usually around four or five days, um, starting in the shade, back inside, shade, sun, back inside, shade, longer sun. You just got to make it gradual. Oh, also, check out North Star Prep Setter, just linked at my corner, hardening off plants uh, from gardeners.com, how to. So check that out. That looks like a great source, too. What causes fruit trees to send up suckers? Um, I guess I don't know the right cause. When a plant sends up a sucker, it, it could be due to stress um, and it wants to preserve its vitality. Um, but most trees that I know have suckers coming off of them. Uh, and then I just prune them off each year. So, but there probably is a deeper reason. Fruit trees is something I'm hoping to learn a ton more about this year. I know a good amount, but not enough where I'm dangerous. Hey, 
Hey, Christina, good morning. How do you stop a pumpkin plant? Okay, thank you for that big star emoji because that made me catch this so easily. How do you stop a pumpkin plant? You top it, you stop the end of the vine. So this is something I utilize in the fall um, when I'm getting close to my last frost date is I top a lot of my vining plants so that way I can get as much produce to ripen instead of having the plant continue to put off baby baby produce, right? If I know a baby produce is not, you know, a baby squash or whatever is not going to come to fruition prior to my last frost date, then I top the plant and I let the plant work on the rest of everything so I get what I can off of it. I've used the moon newer before. <laughs> um, it's fine. I don't. I don't have any problems with it. Okay. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. When do you know it's time to plant outdoors? Uh, your seed packets are going to have a lot of info on that on the back. Um, here, like hold two seconds. Let me grab one. Okay. I'm back. So for instance, so this goes like into our last frost. I should not have grabbed eggplant. That was an accident. Okay. Beautiful. We're looking at champion collards. Got to hide my face. I don't know if you can read it, but it says we are going to start them indoors four to six weeks before your last frost. Um, and then direct sow uh, two weeks before your last frost. Um, and that's, it could be two to three depending on the mildness of your weather. And then it also has in here six to eight weeks before your first frost in the fall to grow a fall crop. So utilize your seed packets. There's so much info on these. Jasmine, I'm glad you're here. So thank you for stopping in. You can always watch these videos as soon as I'm done with them. Um, it's like a two minute bounce back and then you're able to watch them all the way through. If you have questions and you're watching it after the fact, throw them in the comments. Um, that way I can attempt to get back to them and help you out. Dusty flats, yes. That's basically how I picture winter sowing. Timing is not necessarily essential. Um, I use winter sowing as like a last resort sometimes too. If I'm late in planting something inside, um, I'll just toss it in my jugs and toss it outside so I don't have to worry about it. I was moving in between a lot of when my plants needed to be started, so winter sowing was an easy one for me to get them out somewhere, and I didn't have to deal with them, and that way they're still growing. Nature kind of takes care of it all. All right, friends. Oh, we're going to wrap up for the day. Major issues. So we've kind of made it through... Oh. My mom's having major issues. She's used cinnamon, fans, sticky traps. What else can she do? Hmm. Are they too wet? Um, that would be a big one. And by sticky traps, you know, sometimes we need a sticky trap in every container. If your gnats get out of control, load up on all of those things. Don't just try one. It's not going to catch them all. Put as many as you can out to let them... You have as many opportunity to land on them. Um, that should hopefully help. Yeah, you guys, comment on this right after it's done. That way we can, you guys can finish up these combos you're having. All this works. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. You can go ahead and email me. Um, if you have questions, I can answer. I'll check back here around lunchtime and see if I have any comments on here right after the fact. Um, and yeah, I was just making sure I didn't miss a question. I hope you guys have a phenomenal day and we will touch back next week. I want to get into um, 
some more season extensions because a lot of us are getting plants out. Um, I'm going to go over some processes or some structures to put into place that you can either spend a little money on or spend no money on basically. So um, stick with me next week and we'll go over that stuff. Have a great day and we'll talk